Hi, my name is Dylan Gibson. I'm a freelance illustrator and I've been doing this for a while, about 18 years, which is a long time to do anything. I'm lucky to do something I enjoy. I work hard to do good work and keep my commissions coming in. There's a lot of variety in the work I get in. Variety is the spice of life, they say. Work comes from all over, locally, nationally, and further afield. This month I'm working on a comic, a walking tour map, a stag illustration for a shortbread tin, and have created work for blackboards for a cafe. Nearly two decades working at something gives you confidence in what you do. You also fall into bad habits, like doing things you know will work and will please the person who's paying the bill. Know what I said earlier, that I'm an illustrator. It's a specialism within the creative arts. In the same way a person who takes pictures calls themselves photographer. Tags and labels help anyone wanting to employ you find you on Google. They define you good or bad. In my case, it's limited how I think and the opportunities I give myself. Recently, I've started to refer to myself as an artist, mostly to myself, though increasingly to people around me. It's a broader term and intentional to try and free up my thinking and to evaluate who I am and what I do. I want to explore new ideas and bring about change in how I work and the opportunities that will come in and sustain me for years to come. I want to get out there and work more in the local community as my life as an illustrator means that I often work from home. My wife has been very supportive in this regard. She's a practicing artist herself and a person who thinks creatively about when making art and in all aspects of her life. So in the last few years, I've taken her example and thought creatively about aspects of my life and not just when I create illustrations. Sharing my art has been a great adventure. Working with schools, doing workshops and presentations. Live drawing while I projected on screen while I talk is a real multitasking challenge. About two years ago, I joined the Adult Education Association, a local non-profit organization that's focused on learning and social classes for adults. I've been running my fun and fundamentals of drawing class since and it's great to share my skills and experience. I can be a real taskmaster, but fun and enjoyment are key to the class as the name suggests. I've learned from the people who take my class, the way they tackle things that are new to them. They really put themselves out there through their art. I'm also part of an artist collective called Beyond the Boffy. Last year, we did a pop-up exhibition and shop at HPCP in Pitlonkery. It's a great group of talented artists, and again, it's something new, working with others as a team. This year, we'll be continuing our work and are joining up with the Mullen Heritage Centre. It's a place that's chock full of history, stories, and photos of faces long gone. It's a place that inspired me to respond by learning something new, which is portraiture. I wanted to take a record to draw the people who live and work here now to create a small snapshot of the local faces for our exhibition to contrast with those faces from the past found at the centre. Before I started asking for volunteers to sit for me, I had to practice. I've drawn a lot of faces, trying different mediums, styles of drawing and different papers. I need to feel I had an approach before I started lining up people to draw. The process of development is a real joy for an artist, especially when you discover your labours are beginning to work. The approach I've taken is to illustrate all portraits using the humble, workmanlike biro pen. Cheap little bit of plastic that helps us with our shopping list, lists and fridge notes. Everyone has used them. It's a good simple tool and not some fancy drawing implement. There's also the artist vanity involved. I want to impress you with what I can do with this simple barrow. The people I've asked to set for a portrait have been really supportive and have been surprised how touched they are by the gesture. Even when they say, when I say their faces will be part of my exhibition. 
I've been taken back and feel tremendous pressure by that trust, as taking and replicating someone's face is a gesture of trust in me, one I hope I can reward their faith in. Both artist and sitter are putting themselves out there for the community to see. So now, I'm going through my list of people to sit with. Each encounter is a little like speed dating, both of us nervous, and perhaps maybe me more so. We talk, and I sketch them. Trying to capture a person while they move, even if they're just talking, is tricky. But having a conversation while drawing relaxes the sitter and me. I'm looking for that little moment when they feel at their most natural. We all have a public face, the one we'd like others to see. I need to see something more behind the mask for the portrait to work. There's a strange intimacy about sitting with someone, a shared experience that doesn't fit normally into everyday life. It's uniqueness of that experience with that person, which is hard to describe, and one I think will be just as important as the finished art. Our faces are all made of the same stuff, tissues, muscles and bone, yet our faces are so much part of who we are and what we make of one another. Who we are shines through that structure. Our life experiences and outlook move the muscles and crease our faces in different and subtle ways. So with a stroke of a barrow, I can make or break what makes that likeness of a person. But I'm learning and I will be developing this skill long after my exhibition. So if I get a nose wrong or a smile not quite right, please rest assured, my intention is otherwise. And besides, I can always blame it on the humble cheap barrow pen. <laughs>